we start now, please? <laughs> What's up? It's Lauren from Hopper Food, back with another recipe. So today we are going to do a recipe, but the only thing I know that I'm going to do is make waffles because I got a new waffle iron. If you watch my personal YouTube channel, you would have seen a few weeks ago, I said, we really need to get a waffle iron. And so I did. It was only $30 on sale, pretty inexpensive appliance. And now we can make sweet waffles, savory waffles, falafel waffles, pizza waffles, pancake waffles, grilled cheese waffles, potato waffles, mm, breakfast sandwich waffles, spaghetti waffles. <laughs> Basically anything can be waffled now. So I'm very excited. We're gonna make something today. I've never used one of these in my entire life, which is crazy. I can't believe I've never owned one. So we're gonna see what's in the fridge, what kind of leftovers I have going on and make some type of waffle magic. As usual, we are going in the fridge to see what we have. And I know I have a lot of leftovers because it was just Thanksgiving on the weekend for us here in Canada. I've got leftover almond feta. <laughs> I've also got some leftover like potatoes I cooked and seasoned that nobody really ate at Thanksgiving. I've got leftover lasagna. Lasagna waffle? No, not a lasagna waffle, but I think I did mention potato waffle. The, the most logical thing would be to mash up these potatoes, which I think we should do and then make some type of sauce with the leftover cheese, because otherwise we're just making a waffle from scratch with like batter and I, we might as well just use the potatoes. And then I've got lots of greens, so we could put that in on top with the sauce. Okay, so let's work on these potatoes. <laughs> So I'm more into a savory waffle anyways, so I think potato waffle's good. Plus, being that we just had Thanksgiving, but you guys watching in the US have Thanksgiving coming up, now you know you could make a potato waffle with your leftover potatoes or leftover mashed potatoes. So I think that this is the perfect idea on how to use leftovers in our recipe. I'm gonna run these through a food processor to get them really smooth. We should caramelize some onion and put that in there in the, in the potato, kind of like to hold it together because I think waffles normally have eggs in them to make them really like stick together. Um, so caramelized onions is another good binder. Let's do that. So I'm just gonna cut up this leftover onion into thin slices and we're gonna caramelize this in a pan with a little bit of oil and get them nice and brown. Okay, so caramelizing onions takes anywhere from 10 to 16 minutes, depending on how many onions you're doing or whatever. So these will just be a little bit longer. We are going to season this a little bit. There's already salt, pepper, and a little bit of basil on the skin of these. Um, so I'm just gonna add some more spices. Nutmeg, chili powder, and maybe more, a little more basil. And we'll put a uh, clove of garlic in there. Okay, so I think these are close to done. They're good enough. Oh, a little stuffed in here. Um, I'm gonna need some liquid as well, I forgot. So I wanted to make like a buttermilk, which if you watch some of our other videos I've explained is almond or soy milk with apple cider vinegar. Um, and you kind of just let it sit. I should have done it like 10 minutes ago, but anyways. We're gonna do half a cup and a teaspoon of vinegar. Just stir that together and then let it set for 10 minutes. Basically it curdles and that's like buttermilk. Plus you get a little bit of acidity, which is always good to balance things out. I think it needs a little bit more salt and I'm gonna add nutritional yeast and then we're ready for the waffle iron. It's good though. I like the nutmeg. Close the lid, plug the cord in. The ready light will come on to indicate the unit is heating. When the ready light goes out after five minutes, it is ready. The iron is ready. It's very hot. Okay. I think I have to wait like four to six minutes. I set the timer for five minutes. I think the key with waffles, just like pancakes, is patience. It looks good. If I open it and it's not crispy, then the whole thing is ruined because it's just gonna peel apart. I'm scared. Okay, don't burn yourself. 
I think I want to go a little longer. A piece stuck, damn it. Or is it done? Oh, it's not even crispy, shit. How do you get it out? <laughs> I'm afraid I'm gonna rip it, so I'm just gonna dump it onto this cutting board. Ay, 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 okay. Shit. Nope. Okay, friends, we're gonna have to add flour and gluten because there's nothing holding this thing together. We're saving this. So this is still just mashed potatoes with like a very weak crust. So we're gonna add this to a bowl. I'm thinking I'm adding all-purpose flour and maybe some baking powder so that it poofs. Right, we're gonna add half a cup of all-purpose flour. I'm gonna add half a teaspoon of baking powder. And I'm gonna add another tablespoon of nutritional yeast. We have to salvage this, people. I'm just gonna add about another quarter cup of almond milk. All right, let's do this again. Less batter this time. You have no idea what's happening under here. Why don't they make like a clear top? <laughs> Does it smell like it's burning? It's a little crispy now. Maybe this waffle iron sucks. Okay, well, that's better. So this one looks good. I guess we'll just make a couple more. We'll see how many we can get out of this. Okay, I'm gonna make a quick little fresh tomato salsa type stuff for the top. So we're just gonna dice this up and add some cilantro, salt and pepper. I'm just using shallot because I don't have any red onion. All right, I'm just gonna lightly cook this spinach to wilt it. There's uh, some residual oil and onion juice in this pan from when we caramelized the onions, so that'll be good. So you don't need to add anything to this. So these waffles would be perfect with vegan sour cream or cashew sour cream, which we have a recipe for. I'll link below, except we're doing a recipe. So I have leftover almond ricotta, which is from our lasagna roll-ups, if you recall. I'm gonna take this and put it in a blender and we're gonna liquefy it into more of a cheese-like sauce. I'm just gonna add about, a, I don't know, one or two tablespoons of liquid here, almond milk and a little bit of apple cider vinegar to just tarten it up a little bit, because it's already cheese flavored. Okay, it's thinned out enough, but I'm just gonna add a little bit of oil, because I think that'll make it a little smoother. It is almonds, so it's not gonna be as smooth as, say, cashews, but I think this will just kinda like beef it up. Well, would you look at that? There's our savory potato waffles topped with spinach and tomato salsa and almond ricotta cheese. These look delectable. Now, I would say it's a successful recipe. We just had a little bit of trial and error at the beginning there, trying to get that waffle to stick and stay together. And yet again, we were saved by gluten. Mmm. Oh, very savory and oniony. Mm-hmm. So much better than a sweet waffle. I'm gonna eat that whole tray. I made it look like a waffle party platter, but you could also just leave them whole. Make one big stack for yourself. All the flavors really came together. They're on point. We had to play a little bit with that batter, so I don't have an exact recipe for you because it's a recipe. <laughs> I'm gonna try it again and make sure I get it perfect and then I will link it below um, 
to our blog, hotforfoodblog.com. Let me know what you think about this one and the little experiment we did with the waffle iron in the comments below. Make sure you're subscribed because we post new videos every single Wednesday right here on this channel. I also have a personal YouTube channel. Go check it out. I'll link it below as well as here. And I post extra food content like what I ate in a day, uh, sometimes some vegan snack taste tests, different kind of stuff and vlogs so you can see what's going on in my life. And you may or may not know this, but Hopper Food is working on a cookbook. So it's not coming out for a little while because we need some time to work on it. But just so you know, I'm working on like the best of the best recipes for that. So stay tuned. I will be showing behind the scenes of that whole process on my personal YouTube channel. So you can also subscribe to that for more content, more free content. All right, also, I'm just gonna plug a lot of stuff right now. Go to hotforfoodblog.com because we've got Hot For Food shirts on sale. Yes, we do. They say hot for vegan food. So you can wear them loud and proud and tell the world how much you're vegan and how much you love hot for food. Thank you so much for your love and support always. And we'll see you back here next week with a brand new video. Uh, and if you're posting photos of either this recipe or other ones we've made, uh, make sure you tag at hot for food and hashtag hot for food on social media so we can find your creations. All right, that's it. Bye.